Hello everyone from the Renal Congress of the Portuguese Society of Nephrology 2021 from Vila Moura near Faro in Portugal. Welcome to today's presentation, which is centered on how Diavirum is delivering personalized, life-enhancing renal care. But more importantly, it's also a unique opportunity to hear firsthand about Diavirum's latest breakthrough AI innovation announced today, which will deliver a step change in vascular access thrombosis prevention. Now, this is an exciting time, as we'll see. It's a big win for everyone, healthcare professionals, payers, and national health systems, and haemophilus and haemodialysis patients, sorry, around the world. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Akin Carter, I'll be your host, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you Diavirum CEO Dimitris Munavasilis and Fernando Macario. So thank you very much, Akin, and uh, we are delighted to be here in Algarve with this exciting announcement. And we'll also be joined later by uh, Sofia Correa da Baros, who's the country manager here in Portugal. Thank you. Now, as is the Times, we're also being uh, joined remotely uh, because of the times that we're in by David Jakobsen, Digital Development Director in Sweden, Jose Maria Dones, Country Manager in Spain, and the Vice President based in Saudi Arabia in the Middle East region, Zayed, uh, Zayed Kabli. And these are key players in our story. We'll be together for approximately one hour, and at the end there'll be time to set aside questions and that you may have, uh, the Q&A button is at the bottom of your screen, and that's after we've heard from Fernando and David, but first, uh, Demetrius. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Diavirum story, others less so, and we hope this film sets the scene for you. over to you. Good afternoon, ladies uh, and gentlemen. It's a true pleasure to have your digital presence at our webinar today, where we will be presenting our breakthrough vascular access thrombosis prediction artificial intelligence model. 
But allow me first to introduce uh, the Averum. The Averum is a leading global provider in renal care services and the largest independent provider in Europe. We have a leading position in 24 countries operating 452 clinics with uh, 14,000 healthcare professionals serving more than 40,000 patients worldwide. At the Averum, we are globally renowned for our high standards of care and our legacy of excellence, going back to Gambro Healthcare, who invented the world's first dialysis machine. We are also known for our effective service models, which uh, enable healthcare systems to provide uh, better access to dialysis services. At the left of the screen, you may see our benchmark standardized dialysis service, which provides uh, high quality medical outcomes and efficiencies for payers. At the right of the screen, you may see our integrated dialysis care service, where we assume a broad responsibility of the patient's healthcare needs beyond dialysis, reducing the total cost of care for the payer with the potential to further improve medical outcomes. Finally, we are also known for our culture. Our culture of true care and our holistic care approach, which extends from the body to the mind and soul of our patients, widely known as life-enhancing renal care. Over the last uh, 30 years, the Averum has developed a know-how of delivering consistent quality of care and efficiencies across geographies. At the center of everything we do is our proprietary care delivery model comprising five pillars of excellence. Our clinical and medical standards, our patient care evaluation system at the individual patient level, our education and research programs. Our model is governed by a robust clinical governance framework and it's enabled by a continuously evolving digital infrastructure. It is our digital infrastructure that makes our model consistent and scalable. In the future, renal care will be provided through a combination of uh, physical clinics digital solutions and AI predictive analytics offering the most personalized, standardized and efficient dialysis service at scale. At the Averum, we are committed to bring the future forward. Over the last uh, three years, we have embarked on a digital journey to convert our 30 years dialysis know-how into one digital platform. A platform able to connect with clinics across the world, ensuring the highest standards of care and the lowest cost for payers. In recent years, our development teams in Sweden and Hungary have been feverishly working on 70 projects 28 work streams across five main areas. Digitalizing our clinical and operational workflows to accelerate care standardization, maximize efficiencies, and drive consistent quality outcomes and patient safety. Predictive analytics and artificial intelligence to further enhance medical outcomes, predict patient conditions beyond human capability, improve patient quality of life, and reduce the cost of care. Mobile patient and application services, empowering our patients to contribute to their care, both from our clinics or at their home. And finally, establishing an environment of connected care. 
allowing the Avero to offer digitally enabled clinical governance to clinics across the world, providing access to our standards of care to a wider patient population that they are not part of the Diaverum Clinics Network today. We will see the outcomes of this digital transformation journey coming to life gradually over the coming months and next year. Today marks a significant milestone in our digital transformation journey. We are here today to announce our latest development in the field of AI and its direct positive impact on patients' medical outcomes, quality of life, as well as the national healthcare system's finances. I would like to hand over to our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Fernando Macario, to tell us more. Fernando. You are Dimitris presenting our care delivery model. Our clinical strategy is the fundamental pillar of our care delivery model. Our integrated model of care approach includes the most relevant aspects of the treatment and rehabilitation of chronic kidney disease stage five patients. Standardization of procedures, of diagnostic pathways and of therapeutic guidelines is a key driver to define the best possible individual therapeutic interventions. We developed a standardized approach for the management of vascular access, hospitalization, respiratory infection, COVID-19, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease in order to increase longevity, decrease hospitalizations burden, and improve the quality of life and perception of care of our patients. Moreover, our care coordination multidisciplinary teams care for the person instead of just treating diseases. We provide a holistic approach considering all needs, physical, mental, emotional, social, even spiritual. We track clinical performance through an innovative patient care evaluation system, which measures individual clinical performance and outcomes at the patient level. This evaluation system is the basis for artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, risk stratification, and individual precision therapeutic interventions. It includes a per patient analysis of 31 parameters in eight areas of hemodialysis care, adequacy of dialysis, vascular assess, anemia associated with kidney disease, bone mineral disease associated with chronic kidney disease, hypertension, fluid management, nutrition, and even other quality indexes like vaccination and access to kidney transplantation list. It also includes patient reporting outcomes like health-related quality of life and patient perception of care. The data is collected at an individual level and can be correlated with other data like demographic data to give us a clear picture of whatever group, whatever clinic, whatever country, whatever population we want to aggregate and of whatever intervention we want to analyze and follow up. Vascular assess is the line of life for hemodialysis patients. A good vascular assess is one of the key determinants for the well being and for the survival of hemodialysis patients. Fistulas, and especially grafts, can have a thrombosis rate of around. 0.11 to 0.5 episodes per patient per year, respectively. We know that vascular assess thrombosis impact on the patient with increased suffering, hospitalizations, and morbidity. It impacts on the clinics with mistreatments and logistical challenges. 
and it impacts on the health system with increased procedures, hospitalizations, and financial burden. But what if we told you that we could predict 75% of cases previously not detected with the main best clinical practices? We have developed a high accuracy AI model to predict and prevent thrombosis in chronic kidney disease stage five patients on hemodialysis. Our artificial intelligence model assists nephrologists and nurses on detecting potential fistula and graft thrombosis up to one week before it occurs. It, it is a human-centric, explainable, and responsible model. It uses personalized input variables comprising treatment data, lab test results, and demographic data. Better digital tools support our clinical staff to make better clinical decisions. This will drive better outcomes that are relevant for our patients. The gain efficiency will allow clinicians and nurses to dedicate more time to patient care. It will also lower cost of care without jeopardizing, but even increasing quality. We believe this is a win-win for everyone. And now I will hand over to David that will drive you through our AI models. Thank you, Fernando. And hi, everyone. Hi, Portugal. I'm standing here in Thyverum's headquarter in, in Sweden. Happy to join this webinar. So we began our AI journey three years ago with our pres prescription guidance system and an anemia model uh, this was an expert system, a simple AI model, but it clearly showed the benefits of algorithms and data-driven decision support in the clinical workflows. We then explored other use cases and how to utilize machine learning for more sophisticated AI. One year ago, we started uh, a collaboration with an external consulting company to harness the clinical data from a pool of 40,000 patients treated in our clinics. And also to transfer comprehensive AI knowledge to our organization. The goal of the first model in this new collaboration was to develop a model that can predict thrombosis events in grafts and fistulas seven days before the episode takes place. The model that we are presenting today was trained with historical data of about 3,600 patients from Portuguese centers treated during 2020. And it resulted in an average detection rate of around 75% of the thrombosis events. And this is at the expense of 25% false alarms. The trained model was validated with data from the same clinic, but from another time period and data previously unseen uh, by the model. And we have also validated the model with large data sets from Spain and Saudi Arabia, resulting in a very similar uh, performance to the Portuguese data set. So the next phase of the project was to integrate the model into our clinical workflows and in our DCARE platform. Uh, we work together with our medical team to identify where and how to include the output from the model in our clinical applications to maximize the benefit. A prediction is triggered every time a patient completes a new treatment. And immediately after the treatment, the prediction is available in DCARE platform on demand. In case of a positive prediction, it will also be displayed as a pop-up warning at the next treatment, before the patient is connected and right before the vascular access checklist is performed. It's available by the patient's side in our treatment guidance system, and it's impossible for the nurse to miss it. 
AI is often referred to uh, as a black box, but at Diaverum, we believe that AI in healthcare must be human-centric, explainable, and responsible. And we are using a machine learning method to indicate the importance of each input parameter in the final output from the model. And this is also visualized to the users uh, to give some explanation as to why the model came to a certain decision. In parallel with this project, we are building our AI development factory to deliver the future AI capability. And it consists of three major components. The development process, a cross-functional AI team with roles and responsibilities, and a technology stack, including machine learning toolkits, data pipelines, and computing power. Last but not least, we have also designed a comprehensive training program to bring all the stakeholders in the company on the same page so that everyone is aware uh, of the capabilities as well as the limitations of AI technologies. And again, the concept of human-centric, explainable and responsible AI. So we are now in the process of deploying, deploying the model in uh, Portugal, in Spain and Saudi Arabia as the three first countries. And the plan is then to do the rollout across the group in the next 18 months. We see the AI project model as a cyclic process. So we will continuously monitor the predictions and the model accuracy um, as new data is collected in our clinics. And we plan to retrain the model at regular intervals as we have more up-to-date input data. So meanwhile, we have just started uh, our new AI projects. Uh, so that's all from my side. Thank you very much. And over to you, Dimitris. So thank you very much, uh, David. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say that uh, we have selected uh, these three countries because of the Averum's uh, significant presence the availability of data, and the sophistication of their national health authorities. For example, in Saudi Arabia, there has been an amazing healthcare transformation over the last uh, five years, in line with the country's 2030 vision. This makes Saudi Arabia a global champion on the quality of renal care services. And we're proud we were part of this effort. Moreover, the Saudi Ministry of Health is also investing in advanced digital capability, including a command center focusing on patient outcomes and managing and monitoring services across the kingdom. Likewise, in Portugal and many regions of Spain, like Catalonia, the health authorities have also established sophisticated integrated dialysis care systems where providers are measured on outcomes, delivering world-class renal care at lower costs. We have with us today the leaders of each of these regions. I'd like to invite all of them to give us a quick overview of our presence in the countries and what AI innovation means uh, for our patients. And I would like to invite uh, first our, our Vice President for Middle East, uh, Ziad Kabli. Ziad, are you with us today? Hi, uh, Dimitris. Hello, everyone, and greetings from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, we are a team of 1,300 passionate healthcare professionals serving 4,300 patients in 40 clinics across the country. Uh, we are committed to adopt the cutting edge technologies in renal care, and we're delighted in the Averam Saudi to be among leading countries to deploy an artificial intelligence enabled solution to help enhance the quality of life for our patients. We will always need doctors in our clinics to provide what they always do, providing great medical care. The human interaction coupled with the advanced technology will set the bar even higher for the future of comprehensive renal care in Saudi and across the world, I believe. Thank you. 
So thank you very much, uh, Ziad, uh, both for the contribution and, uh, and the amazing work you are doing together with the team the last uh, seven years Saudi. Now I have next to me the host of this uh, event, our leader in Portugal, Sofia Correa de Barros. Sofia. Well, first of all, thank you, Dimitris, and thank you, Fernando, for choosing Portugal to host such a relevant announcement. I would like to start, and if I may, to congratulate the whole the Averum Portugal team for the amazing, excellent results from clinical performance, and that places in the top two countries in Portugal, in Europe, sorry. I have to also to say that we are really proud, first, to participate in the development of such an exciting AI model, and now for being chosen to be one of the first countries to offer this enhanced value a tool to our patients. It's really a privilege, thank you. This is the missing piece that we were looking for to complement our holistic coordinated care program. So thank you again for the opportunity and we are looking forward to implement it. Sophia, th thank you as a team for the amazing work that makes our group proud. And let me uh, ask to connect with uh, Spain and Madrid and uh, our leader, Jose Maria Ordoñez. Jose Maria, are you with us? Hi, Dimitris. Good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes a todos. Boa tarde. First of all, I would like to thank all the participants to this webinar, and especially those from Spain. I feel very proud to lead Diabetes in Spain with 1,100 healthcare professionals taking care of 4,300 patients in 47 clinics. In the recent years, our successful value proposition in public tenders, based in our comprehensive patient care, has made us leaders in the Spanish market and a healthcare provider that authorities can trust. Diabetes in Spain has the privilege of taking part in the implementation of this AI model, so important for the technological advancement of the company and the health sector in general. In this way, we will be able to provide more efficient, standardized, and high quality care to our patients. Thank you. Jose Maria, I think uh, I will repeat myself, but I have to say once more, thank you for the exceptional work that uh, you are doing together with our Spanish team we are all just grateful and we're very proud uh, for what we're doing in Spain. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, at the Averum, we are passionate about leading the transformation of renal care. Our ambition is to be the leader in integrated, AI-enabled, personalized dialysis care. We will become so by building digital solutions around our patients and their needs. To ultimately improve care, make it true care, because everyone deserves a fulfilling life. With that said, Akim, I think we can now start uh, our Q&A session, and I'm sure Fernando, myself, David, whoever, will be delighted to take uh, any question that might come from the audience. Thank you very much, Demetrius. Yes, we'd like to hear from our audience online. And by way of a reminder for those on the Zoom webinar, you can click the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. Now, um, hopefully there'll be lots of questions coming our way, but I think there's a question top of mind, uh, some medical questions, I think, for Fernando, uh, which is top of mind. Will this model substitute clinical evaluation of vascular access? What's your take on that? If you want a clear answer, I will say no. Let me say that, first of all, this model utilizes data taken from the clinical evaluation of our nurses and our nephrologists. So, in the end, we need this clinical evaluation for the model to perform well. And then the model comes with the result. And after the, this result, the nephrologist and the nurse will have to evaluate the patient again to see if the, this result is the correct results for the, that clinical situation. So eventually they even will have to do again a clinical evaluation and eventually an ultrasound sound exam. So this not, does not substitute clinical evaluation. It makes clinical evaluation even more relevant. 
you know, a couple more medical questions that are coming our way. What impact do you expect on vascular access uh, medical outcomes? And do you believe this model will contribute to a decrease in catheter rates? Now the clear answer for the second part of the question is yes, and I will explain why. First of all, on, on medical outcomes, we expect to have better medical outcomes, not only on the vascular assess aspect, but also for the patient. Because we know that thrombosis causes a lot of suffering for the patient, and in the end, it can result in a lost fistula or graft. We will increase the accuracy of the diagnosis that will allow us to do a earlier, an earlier intervention on that. With an earlier intervention, we can, first of all, avoid the thrombosis, and we can also do it with a simple procedure then after the thrombosis. So this is the first impact on medical outcomes. It will allow us to save some fistulas and it will allow us to diminish the suffering of the patient with better intervention on that. Of course, if we can save fistulas and grafts, they will survive more. And let me tell you that survival of the vascular assess is recognized as a value outcome for the patient. The International Consortium for Health Outcomes has developed a set of standard outcomes for chronic kidney disease. And on what concerns hemodialysis patients, this is the most relevant outcome, survival of the vascular assess. So with that, we can improve, increase the survival of fistulas and grafts. Of course, if the patient has a fistula, it does not need a catheter. That is a worse excess. So the, the catheter rate can decrease also with this AI-enabled tool. Dimitris, uh, another question, maybe for you. What about the nurses and nephrologists? Uh, do you see, do you expect to foresee a decrease in their ratio? I mean, uh, from uh, an AI model uh, predicting a thrombosis to the fistular graft, the quick answer is no. I do think, though, that uh, with uh, the further maturity of our digital platform and the further AI solutions, we will allow nephrologists to be more productive and the nurses to be more productive as they will be able to focus solely on patient care. And there are many places of this world that uh, is very scarce resource nurses. So ho hopefully in the future, we're going to see more efficient uh, dialysis uh, services as nurses and doctors will have the the help of uh, the AI models we will be producing. Thank you for that. Um, I think we've got a digital question that's just come our way, uh, obviously for David. What type of machine learning did you use and how did you label the data? And, and how many input variables uh, did you use? Good questions. Um, so it's supervised machine learning. Uh, and that means the data is provided with labels and ground truth uh, in the training process of the model. And we evaluated 15 different models or machine learning algorithms uh, and actually more than 5,000 versions of, of the configuration of this uh, final algorithm that we selected um, in, to, to, to find the right combination of the algorithm and configuration of the model. Uh, and thanks to our incident reporting system, which is also integrated and managed in the DCARE platform, uh, labeling the data was straightforward in this case. We already had the labels in the database from the incidents reported uh, according to our mm -hmm. clinical standard. So we simply use the incident reports as the labels for the data. Uh, now, how many input variables we used? We started off with a initial set of 150, uh, 156 input variables and then we used machine learning methods and a feature selection algorithm to to find the most informative input variables to use uh, for the model in the end so we ended up with a subset of parameters and it's mainly as mentioned before in the presentation dialysis treatment data lab results and demographics now exactly what machine learning algorithms we ended up with and the number of 
input variables, uh, we decided to keep that for ourselves for the time being. Thank you very much, David. Um, back to you, Fernando. You gave us the big number there, 75% detection rate. Why did you consider 75% detection rate a, a good result? And, and why did you choose vascular access thrombosis for your first AI project? Well, once again, I will start by the second part of your question. <laughs> why did we choose? I already answered partly on that because effectively vascular access survival is one of the main outcomes for hemodialysis patients. And the aspect that influences more the vascular assess survival of fistulas and grafts is thrombosis. So it was logical to choose this specific aspect for our first AI project, because it will have a high impact on the patient. And we know that when a patient loses his fistula or his graft, you will have some suffering, you will need a catheter, and we know that catheters increase morbidity and mortality of our patients. So this was the point to act on vascular assess. Then you asked me about the 75% detection rate. Let me tell you that we have a program in our clinical strategy for vascular assess management, a very advanced program that allow us to have very good results on vascular assess management in our, in our company. And we have this program implemented completely in Saudi Arabia, in Portugal, in Spain, with extremely good results. And this comes on top of this. With the clinical evaluation, we still have are missing some thrombosis. And this 75% is a number of episodes that were not detected by the usual good clinical evaluation. So I consider this a very good result. And let me tell you that I was even surprised when I saw this result the first time, because these are cases that were not detected. So, Dimitris, um, let's talk a little bit about the, the rollout from here. Do you plan to make the, the model available outside of the, the Diavira network? The answer is, uh, in time, uh, yes. We plan to make available our digital platform, our digital workflows, and uh, this AI model and the next two comes. Uh, in time, after a year where everything will be uh, in place, I guess for next year we will be validating this model and we'll be announcing other models as well across the group, and then we will definitely give uh, access to patients uh, around the world to enjoy the Diaverum clinical standards. We will give access to other clinics in our know-how in order for them to be able to drive, uh, uh, to lower the mortality, uh, to, to drive longevity, to, to improve the hospitalization trends, to provide better care to the patients. Great. Uh, some more questions, quite a raft of questions that are coming in. Um, Question to Dimitri. Hello, Dimitris. Any AI models that have been developed to predict uh, CV events or mortality among dialysis patients? This is Vikram from Nephroplast. Hi, Vikram. <laughs> Very good to see you. So, so Vikram, we have uh, a pipeline of models. Uh, there are many of them that uh, relate to the different uh, reasons of patient hospitalization. Uh, as uh, all these models are on the development phase, uh, we cannot uh, share more details at this uh, meeting, but uh, over the next months, as we introduce uh, new services and new releases, I will be very delighted to share and also uh, I can give you a call personally. Okay, uh, another one. I think this is for you, David. You mentioned you build an AI factory. What do you expect uh, to be at the, at the end date, at the end state? Do you intend to go beyond renal care? Well, first of all, uh, I think uh, an AI project is different in many ways from a traditional software development project. It's more research heavy. Uh, you, you, you need to be in the lab and you need to explore the models and what you can do with the data. Uh, so there are some phases that are new to us simply. So we had to build up the process and we have to build the team organization and, and also introduce new technologies. 
Um, so uh, I, I think I will hand over to Dimitris for the question if we have any plans further on. But uh, so far in the development team, we have been working with renal healthcare and, and our dialysis. I mean, clinics. we are a renal healthcare company. Uh, and uh, maybe I would like to make a distinction. Uh, I guess uh, AI projects will come from our medtech partners uh, that they provide the dialysis monitors. And we will be delighted to understand the offering and incorporate them to our clinics. I think in our case, we are focusing on renal care. I think we have the highest, uh, among the highest standards of care globally, and we are digitalizing and we are these, these standards, these processes, and we are boosting further uh, the care outcomes by developing AI. Thank you. Uh, some congratulatory remarks here. Uh, excellent progress and really innovative. Uh, but would you consider to expand the approach to avoid unplanned hospitalizations of dialysis patients? What's your... What's your uh, as I said, uh, there's a pipeline of models. I will disclose now since this question come that uh, uh, hospitalization and uh, rehospitalization of patients is already part of our pipeline. And there has been a lot of work done in this field, but again, they are still on the uh, development phase. Yeah, and uh, more questions coming in on the on the rollout. Uh, how long do you expect to complete the rollout uh, across all countries? Uh, the countries that you're rolling out. Yes, in, in, the, in, the, in the Averum us, we have uh, one digital platform uh, across uh, the countries. It's something that we can do it in a matter of few weeks. Uh, I think the process over the next uh, months is to validate the model across the rest 21 developed countries, train it, and then roll it uh, out. Obviously, there are some countries that joined uh, the Averum recently, uh, like our esteemed uh, colleagues uh, in Singapore and Malaysia. So we need there to, to deploy our platform. This is something which is uh, ongoing. Uh, but uh, as we said, uh, we expect uh, over a period of 18 months to have the model available everywhere and about time this period also to release it also to, to, to countries and clinics out of the Diaverum network. A follow-up question. Uh, do you plan to publish the data and methodology uh, be beyond your analysis? Uh, we will make several publications. Uh, I, I think uh, I will give to Fernando because we're going to make also clinical studies. Yes, this is the principle that we have for all our clinical strategy to analyze and to study from a scientific point of view what we are doing. And of course, with this project, we have this in our project and it will come in due time. We will analyze, we are already doing that, of course, the, the results of this project, not only the project in, ex in itself, the program in itself, but also, and that's very important, what is the impact on the outcomes from this? That will be extremely important from the clinical point of view to compare this with usual, uh, you, you, usual uh, clinical evaluation and to look at the impact on the outcomes that we expect from this program. Now, there's a further uh, question here about CKD. And is Diaverum already developing a predictive model for ER episodes and for inpatient episodes related to treatment? That's CKD uh, complications. Uh, as I said, I think I will uh, stay with the same answer. I think we have, a, we have a pipeline of models as soon as they mature, as soon as they are validated, and we are happy with the outcome. But Fernando, you may. Can, can I build on this? Yeah. I will give a more general answer to some of these questions that are asking for different aspects. The way we built our collect, the way we collect our data at an individual level with many different parameters will allow us to define new programs of a high analytics prediction risk stratification. So I think this can answer to Correct. some of the several questions that we have here. We have built our data structure to allow us to do this kind of uh, evolution. Yeah, so more questions coming in here. One's, one's a statement and one's a question, I think. So vac vascular access is a crucial issue for health related with the quality of life for kidney patients. M many thanks for this achievement. So the question is, do you think we could improve the preparation and the, of the surgeries and the fistulas with, with this AI tool? What's your view on that, Fernando? Absolutely. It's a very good question. And uh, uh, with this AI tool, some of the patients will need an intervention. But if we can predict this before the thrombosis of, 
cure, this will have an impact on the surgery or on the vascular intervention on this. Uh, congratulations for this fantastic work. Do you worry that this may lead uh, to unnecessary investigations or stress for one in four patients? Do you want to take that question first? And there's a sort of supplementary off the back of that. Yes, of course, we thought about that. It's something that is, is in our mind, is the 25% that of patients that can have an alert and will not have a thrombosis. But for that, we have our vascular assess clinical strategy program. These patients will be evaluated by the nurses and by the nephrologist. Eventually, they will do a neutral examination that we have in many of our clinics. For instance, in Spain, we have ultrasound in our, all our clinics. So I think this will not be a factor of stress, just an additional clinical evaluation, and then everybody will feel safer with this. And there's a supplementary off the back of that, and I think that may be for, for David as well. Is there any scope to review this model in the future as more data is collected, aiming to increase accuracy still further? Absolutely. Uh, as I mentioned in the, pre in, in the pre presentation, I mean, it's a cyclic process. Uh, monitoring and many, maintaining the AI model and we need to keep it fresh so to say with, with new data and updated data in the future. So we have a monitoring in place to uh, as we go we will measure uh, the prediction and the accuracy. Thank you David. Um, Dimitris back to you I think this is a sort of big picture question here. This, this is truly in innovation, it's disruptive and will save lives. So what does the renal care industry need to learn from this big step forward for, for patients? What's your take on that? I think, uh, I think two things. I think this industry, and we can all recognize that over many years was uh, criticized uh, on lack of innovation. I think uh, there is a true opportunity to use the data we collect uh, from our patients and innovate in patient care. This is an innovation we can take place now it will reduce the cost of care for the payers. It will improve the quality of outcomes for our patients. Now, it's extremely important to do so. Organizations mm -hmm. should be able to measure and evaluate care on a patient level. For the Averum, every patient has a value, a score, that we track it daily at the clinic level, monthly, at the country level, at the group level. And first of all, we can make sure that our colleagues across many countries are adhering to the quality of care or standards of care. But most importantly, we may even take this data, which are personal data, and associate them with many patient incidents and develop artificial intelligence models in order to, to give a solution. I think the Averum today is in a position to announce this model and the others to come because years ago, we move to this uh, personalized uh, approach in measuring the care we provide to the patient. And uh, I think that there has been a fantastic uh, work and culture from Fernando and the medical team over the years. Uh, it's a rather sort of general question, but a big question maybe for everyone. I mean, what have been the challenges? I try to think a challenge, but maybe David can help. So David, <laughs> what were the technical challenges? Oh. Maybe I can start yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. before the technical <laughs> challenge yeah. that maybe we will talk about for sure. First, first challenge was to think differently. We needed to think differently. The second one is to make people believe in this. It's not always easy to, because we have been working the same way for many years, is to make people believe in this. And I think now I will end up and over to David, maybe you will talk us about data or something like this. Of David, course, first, the big, the big data challenges. Yeah, so I mean, the technical challenges are many in this project, I would say. I mean, uh, first of all, as mentioned, we also established the AI development factory and the new processes and roles and so on. So this was in this project, our first AI, real AI project. This was new to us. And then when it comes to the data and the actual problem of predicting thrombosis, I think the main challenge has been that uh, it's a highly imbalanced data set. 
So it's a quite rare condition. I think we saw in the video that it, the incident rate is somewhere 0 0.1 uh, to 0 0.5 something per year in patient. So uh, you need a lot of treatments and, and a lot of patients um, during a quite long uh, period of time to get the sufficient amount of uh, thrombosis events for your training data. Uh, and then you have, I mean, it's a, it's a known problem in machine learning when you have an imbalanced uh, um, data sets. It's easier when you have one class uh, constitutes 50% uh, of, the, of the cases in your training data, data set and the other one uh, with the equal size. So I would say that's the main challenge that we faced. Uh, any other challenges that anybody else would like to uh, add to, to, that, to that answer from... Uh... No, I think we're. Okay. Well, I think those are the, the, the major challenges. Here. Okay, so uh, a question around, I, I guess, uh, some of the variables. This is an interesting one. The outcome of patients are often determined by patient knowledge level, behavior, and so-called social determinants of health. Any plans to consider these factors in, in future solutions? For Fernando, is that is that one for you to start with? That's another very interesting question and a very good question, because effectively, when we deploy digital solutions and we talk about artificial intelligence and having machines giving some advices, we need to prepare everybody for this, even our patients. But I think we are in a very good position to do this because we have what we call a patient literacy group. We are working together, uh, the medical team and the people's team, where we are developing, we are already doing the promotion of patient literacy, educating the patient. That's extremely important and it will help a lot on this. Maybe I would add to that, Fernando, that uh, as part uh, of uh, our patient care evaluation, we have, as you just said, the health related quality of life and the perception of care, which for us is equally important with the dialysis treatments, the lab results. And uh, so have a holistic view at the patient level, which again, I will repeat, it's measured on a patient level. So this is easier to follow and improve care in every clinic across the planet. A uh, couple more questions, or the last question, I think that's uh, all we have time for perhaps. Is there a place for the medication effectiveness analysis in this new approach? I view? think with this new approach, the sky is the limit. And of course we can go on this. Uh, the data that we collect, of course, will be the, the ground to do this kind of analysis. So if the answer is, again, a clear yes. We can analyze that, that with all the data that we have around the patient. So thank you very much for that. I think that brings us to the end of our session. Thank you very much for, for those questions. Uh, very thought provoking, I think. And thank you very much. I think we should leave a few final words with you, Dimitris. Actually, one sentence, Akin. First of all, thank you very much for facilitating this session. A big thank you uh, to all of our guests today uh, that shared, uh, we, we were able to share with you our announcement, and we are truly looking forward to discuss even our further innovation solutions that we're going to bring uh, in the future. Thank you very much for being here today and uh, also for your great questions. Thank you. <laughs>